Hi folks! I'm going to explain how the ion propulsion in my Star Trek Enterprise model worked, and also how a lifter works. They're really the same type of ionocraft. This should also help anyone who wants to make one. The basic idea is that you put a sharp-edged object near a smooth-edged object. Both usually are electrically conductive materials. You then put a high voltage across them, like I do with my homemade high voltage power supply. In my Enterprise, each nacelle had its own ion propulsion engine. I'd put some sharp-ended wires inside one end, and a rounded edge cylinder made of aluminum foil inside the other end. The rounded edge met the requirement of using something smooth. In a lifter, a very thin wire is strung up here, usually 30 gauge. The wire's thinness provides the sharp edge. The smooth object is this aluminum foil here, with its top edge folded over some balsa wood, to make it nice and round or smooth. Why is having one object sharp and the other smooth important? Let's look at how it works. As I said, you apply a high voltage across them using a high voltage power supply. Let's say these are the atoms that make up the materials. Each atom has a bunch of positive protons and a bunch of negative electrons. They have the same number of both, so the positives balance out the negatives. In that case, we say the atoms are neutral. Let's also say we connect the sharp object to the power supply's positive terminal and the smooth object to the power supply's negative terminal. But we could have done it the other way instead. Both ways work. Since we connected the sharp object to the power supply's positive, when we turn it on, the electrons from the atoms are pulled away, leaving the atoms with more positive protons than negative electrons. The atoms are now positively charged. Similarly, since we connected the smooth object to the power supply's negative, extra electrons are sent to the smooth object. There are now more negative electrons overall than positive protons, so that side is negatively charged. To make it simple, we'll show only the unbalanced, or extra charges. We'll also make them a little bigger, so they're easier to see. Notice that there are the same number of charges on both sides. More importantly, notice that they are packed more closely together on the sharp object than they are on the smooth object. There's something called an electric field between the two sides. We can visualize this electric field by drawing lines between each pair of charges. In real life, there aren't any lines, but it helps for visualization. The closeness, or density, of the lines says how strong the electric field is. The farther apart they are, like here, the weaker the electric field is. The closer they are together, like here, the stronger the electric field is. It's the closeness of charges on the sharp object that make the electric field strong here. That's why we use a sharp object in the first place, to get that strong electric field there. But there are other atoms involved too, the atoms in the air between. Those atoms also contain positive protons and negative electrons. The electric field is so strong here that it can pull electrons from an atom. The direction the electron moves is determined by the polarity of the charges. Unlike charges attract each other, so the negative electron is attracted towards the positively charged object. Meanwhile, like charges repel each other, so the negative electron is repelled from the negatively charged object. That leaves the atom with more positive protons than negative electrons, so it's positively charged. An atom with an unbalanced charge like this is called an ion. It's repelled from the positively charged object and attracted toward the negatively charged one. So far, nothing here would have caused any propulsion. All forces in both directions balanced out and there was no outside influence. Let's say you're wearing rollerblades. Removing the electron from the atom would be like holding a piece of bread in your hands in front of you and tearing it apart. That doesn't cause you to move sideways in either direction. When the electron arrives at the sharp object, that doesn't result in any propulsion either, since it's the electric field from the objects that put it there. Again, if you're wearing rollerblades and you have a ball in your hand and push yourself with it, that won't cause you to move, since you're doing the pushing and you're the one being pushed. But there's another player involved here. In this air here, where the electric field is weaker, there are more atoms with equal number of protons and electrons, what are called neutral atoms. Since they're neutral, they don't interact with the electric field. They're not connected to our charged objects in any useful way. When one of the positive ions that we created collides with one of the neutral atoms, sometimes it will have enough energy to knock an electron free. The negative electron will be attracted to the positively charged object, and will have another positive ion moving in this direction. More often, though, the collision doesn't have enough energy to knock an electron free, and instead it will just be slowed down, maybe even change direction. Now you might think that that shouldn't affect our objects, since the ions are not connected to our objects. But they are. The positive ion was moving in this direction because it was being attracted by the negatively charged smooth object, and repelled by the positively charged sharp object. They're connected by the electric field. It's as if there are arms holding the ion and moving it. When the ion collides with the neutral atom, the ion experiences a force in this direction, and drags the charged objects along with it. 
That's as if this time you held the ball in your hand and used it to push against a chair that you're not connected to. This time you do move. The chair is like our neutral atom. It's not a part of the system. So the whole device moves in this direction, in the direction of the sharp object. You can see that in the Enterprise model, where the smooth aluminum cylinder is at this end of the nacelle, and the sharp-ended wires are at this end. The Enterprise moves in this direction, the direction of the sharp-ended wires. The same applies to the lifter. The smooth topped aluminum foil is here, and the sharp, thin wire is here. The lifter moves up in the direction of the sharp, thin wire. Some of those neutral atoms will collide with other ones, and the overall direction will become pretty random, and end up as heat. But many will also continue moving in this direction, or may collide with others which will move in that direction. Since they're neutral, they won't interact with the device. That's the ion wind, even though much of it isn't ions. The last point to mention is that it also works if you connect the negative to the sharp object and the positive to the smooth object instead. In fact, here the very thin wire is connected to the negative, and the lifter is flying. There are some differences in what happens, but the basic idea is the same. And that's how the ion propulsion works for my Star Trek Enterprise model and for a lifter. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, RimStar.org, for more videos like this. That includes the one showing the Star Trek Enterprise being propelled using ion propulsion, another showing step-by-step -step how to make a lifter, and for variety, one on how to make a loudspeaker using a piezoelectric crystal. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question, or comment below. See you in a bit.